In the first part of this lesson, we will develop a technique for measuring the length of an arc. In other words, if you have a function like y equal to x squared, this is the graph of that function, we can call it an arc. What is the length of this arc? Is it possible to measure it? Well, if you have an arc like this, and if you divide these arcs into infinitely small, small sections, you can imagine that each of these sections is actually a straight line. And it is easy to measure the length of a straight line. And once you have the length of each of these little pieces, we can add them all together from x equal to a to x equal to b, or integrate them. That is the method that we are going to you know, develop in the first part of this lesson. In the second part, we will see if you have a curve like this, or any curve, and if you revolve this curve about an axis, now, what do you actually produce if you revolve a curve about an axis? You actually produce a surface. Is that right? Now, how do you find the area of such a surface? So, these are the two techniques that we are going to develop in this lesson. We will start by developing a method to measure the length of an arc. All right? Now, consider a curve drawn in the interval x equal to a to x equal to b. Here you have a curve drawn from x equal to a to x equal to b and we need to find the length of that arc. Now let's call this end of the curve as p and the other end as q. We want to find the length of the arc pq. Now, if dx is the x difference, if dx is the x difference, and dy is the y difference of the coordinates of p and q. You see, if the coordinate of p is x1, y1, and the coordinate of q is x2, y2, then this distance we call dx is x2 minus x1 and this is dy which is y2 minus y1 that has no difficulty understanding and the straight line distance pq is such that pq squared equal to dx squared plus dy squared is that right? that's the Pythagoras theorem now if P and Q are sufficiently close to each other, then the length of the arc PQ will actually be equal to the length of the straight line PQ, and that is the method we are actually going to use in this section. So when P and Q are very close to each other, in other words, the distance is very small, then the length of the line PQ equal to the length of the arc PQ. Well, if ds is the length of the arc, we will replace PQ by ds. What, is, what does ds stands for? ds is the length of the arc, <coughs> the length of the arc PQ. Then we have a ds squared equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Now, let's divide both uh, sides by dx squared, and what do you get? ds squared divided by dx squared equal to dx squared divided by dx squared plus dy squared by dx squared. Just divide each term by dx squared, and what do you get? That gives you <coughs> ds squared equal to, what I have done is, I have simplified it and then multiplied every term by dx squared. So we get ds squared equal to 1 plus dy squared over dx squared 
times dx squared. I hope you understand that state. Now this is 1 and the right side is 1 plus dy squared over dx squared and multiply that by dx squared that will give you ds squared. And what does ds stand for? ds is the length of the arc which is approximately equal to the length pq and when p and q are very very close to each other they are actually equal to each other. Well, now let's rewrite this. This will be 1 plus this can be written as dy by dx all squared. What does dy by dx stands for? The derivative of y with respect to x. So dx squared is 1 plus dy by dx all squared the quantity multiplied by dx squared. Now therefore to find ds what all we need to do is take the square root of both sides. Alright? That gives you ds equal to square root of 1 plus dy by dx or squared dx. Now, this is an expression for the distance between two points on a curve when that points are very close to each other. And once you have that, to find the entire distance s, what all we need to do is add all such ds's or integrate this ds from x equal to a to x equal to b that will give you the length of the arc all right so the arc length on the interval a b can be cut into the infinite number of such pieces that has these lengths and look at this now this is the length of the arc that we need to find. And to do that, what did we do? We cut this arc into infinite number of small pieces. Now here, I have shown that small piece to be rather big. But in the actual sense, these small pieces will be very small. So that the straight line distance and the arc distance will be the same. And the length of each of these arcs will be given by this expression. ds equal to square root of 1 plus dy by dx or squared dx. And what we then need to do is add such ds distances. ds1 plus ds2 plus ds3 plus ds4. There will be thousands and thousands. Is that right? Or simply integrate from x equal to a to x equal to b of the ds. That will give you the length of the arc from x equal to a to x equal to b. And so, here we have s equal to integral a to b of this quantity, which is square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. All right. Let's... Um, Look at that one more time. So, what is the expression for arc length of a function, f of x, on the interval a, b? Write it down on your own. s equal to integral a to b square root 1 plus dy by dx all squared dx. There you go. Now, this is if the function is a function of x. If the function is a function of y, then what is the length of the arc measured from y equal to c to y equal to d? Can you write down a similar integral? Yes, it will be s equal to integral c to d of 1 plus f prime y all squared dy. So in the first case, it is the derivative of the function with respect to x. <clears throat> and in the second case, it is the derivative of the function with respect to y. A function of x, a function of y. Alright, and see whether you can do this on your own.